Hello, and welcome to a quick video to take you through the cloud features of HQuest Builder. Uh, these have been a long time in the making, but I'm very pleased to finally be able to show you how all of these functions work. Um, and I hope that it's something which will help you in your quest building kind of adventures. Um, so here we are. This is the map view that you'll all be familiar with um, and our edit palette, palette on the left here. Um, the tabs here are pretty much as they've always been, but just there's a new one here called Cloud Save and Share. So there's a bit of blurb here about what the function that functionality is, but the key thing that you can do within this tab before you've activated your account is that you can use your email address to register and then you'll be sent a verification email and then you'll be able to access uh, a unique key that is a lot kind of exactly attributed to you. Uh, please don't share it with anybody because that's your effectively your password to access the cloud features of HQuest Builder and it's where all of your quests will be safely uh, kept away. Um, I've already generated a key, so I'm going to put my key in and just show you what happens then. So I open my key here, press save key, that will activate and then I will be able to see what I have in my cloud account. When you're first activating, you won't see anything here, but you'll probably have a link to this very video just to explain how things work. Uh, just working down this tab very quickly, at the top uh, it says how many cloud quest slots have been used. This number may vary depending on when you're viewing this and when you are accessing this particular feature. Um, you can request more slots whenever you want to, they're not limited by any means, it's just I had to put a sensible limit to kind of start this process of allowing people to have cloud, cloud saving features. So. Um, yeah, just to get in touch if you want some more. There's no kind of limit, really. It's just I had to put a number in there uh, for kind of new users registering on the service. Um, equally, if you want to detach your cloud features and just kind of disconnect them, you just hit this and it will revert back to the previous screen. This polite reminder should be something that hopefully people will adhere to. Um, I don't really want to get in trouble with Hasbro for people replicating and sharing other people's work. We all know how much effort and time goes into creating uh, quests, so please be mindful of this while using HQuest Builder. Don't worry, you can get rid of that. It doesn't stay there the whole time kind of um, dictating to you how things should be done. Um, but in this list, this is the current list of quests which I have shared with the community. These have been shared for a while, um, but you're probably more kind of more interested in how it actually works for yourselves. So if we go to the quest list here, you'll be very familiar. This is a Kind of the standard place that you've been working in for a long time now in HQuest Builder and then the kind of composition pane here as well. Um, just to remind you, um, you can actually back up and save directly from this list without having cloud features. The cloud features are never going to be a requirement of using HQuest Builder, they're just an enhancement. So if you want to use um, HQuest Builder as you always have done, it's machine based, it saves your quests onto your browser into your local storage uh, but equally, you can then back them up to something called an HQB file from here. So if you click OK, that will back up your quest file and then you can restore it at a later date if you want to from that file from your machine. You don't have to have the cloud features at all. So just to be clear about that, I didn't want people thinking that we were that this was turning into a cloud only featured service. Uh, the kind of offline services of HQS Builder are always going to be the same. But say we're creating a new quest here. I'm going to create a fresh new quest and call it my quest because I don't have a huge imagination at the moment. I'm going to put one little goblin in the middle of the room with no doors because they're quite evil little creatures. Um, I'm going to go to my normal quest list here and it's there as it should be and I can move between them. If I want to add it to the cloud, all I need to do is click this little uh, button here and what that will do is it will push that quest to my cloud storage. Um, it's worth noting if you've already got a quest that basically is it so if I push the tower that would then replace the copy of the tower that I had in the cloud. Equally if I'm on the cloud area and I just choose to pull one of these ones down or pull it onto my machine that will then replace the copy that's on my machine. So I technically can completely delete my quest now if I want to no longer there, it's in the cloud, and if I want to, I can pull that down onto my local machine like that, and now I can access my little goblin in his little room. Um, and that will work for all of these quests, basically. It basically means if you wish to, you can actually delete your quest list off your local machine 
Uh, you can move between devices if you want to, as long as you remember where the latest version of your quests are. Um, the other thing which is a key thing to remember is when you upload your quest to the cloud for the first time, it will be private. And this little gray icon, this little icon here will be gray. If you click it, it will basically make it a publicly viewable quest. And it will also add it to the, camp, the kind of the quest list, which is in the communities area as well. Each quest has its own un unique URL or link. Um, and if I click here, <laughs> see our little goblin once more in his little room. Um, you can also choose to unshare at any point if you wish to. And if you do that, we can no longer visit that link. Um, but if you reshare again after this, the link will always stay the same. So if you wish to, you can actually take quests offline and put them back online if you want to. Uh, and if anyone's got any links to that page, um, they will, the, the, the quest kind of link will not change, basically. Um, looking at this little feature here, this is a, something called quest metadata. So in order to make it so that the community tab is a little bit nicer for people to explore and find quests that they might be interested in, um, it was suggested, and it was a very good suggestion, that we have the ability to kind of tag quests within individual bits of information so that people can find them better. Um, it's quite a lot on here. There's quite a few sensible defaults, to be fair. Um, language is the really key one, because I, I know for a fact that quite a few people from different countries use HQuest Builder. So it would be really nice to have the facility for them to select which quest um, language they would like to find quests in. And hopefully in time, we'll have some nice kind of multilingual quests for people to explore. Uh, I'm going to tag mine with English. Um, the number of heroes required for this particular quest, I cannot remember, but we can select that here. Um, and again, there's different selections for all of these just to kind of tailor what data sits around your quest, including homebrew information and also any expansions which might be required to play that particular quest as well. Now, once we get down here, we've got something called first quest in campaign. So there is now campaigns with an HQuest builder but only within the cloud area of uh, the, the website. So basically the way campaigns work are they are controlled from the primary quest or the first quest in the campaign. So you write all of your campaign data there and you kind of set it all up and then the rest of the information is kind of applied to the, to the other quests in the campaign. So for example, if I want the tower to be my first quest in the campaign, um, it will then ask for the quest sequence. So the sequence that you select here will be the sequence that they should be played in or the sequence of the campaign. So I'm going to say, well, after the tower, they go to the sorcerer's lair and then they go to the catacomb. So that's going to be my quest and I'm going to call it my campaign because I don't have a massive imagination right now. Uh, there's some additional fields here. They will be coming soon. The whole idea is you will be able to have a cover image and a prologue and an epilogue. I haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm going to display that. So rather than getting people to put a lot of information in there, I'd much rather get the bare bones of campaigns working so they've got a title and that they know that they've got associated quests. And then when I figure out a way of displaying these, I can say what size the image should be, for example, and what kind of lengths these kind of bits of information should be. Um, but it is definitely coming, don't worry. Um, so when I save this, what will happen is the quests that were linked to my campaign have now had a little title applied to them. So you can see this little My Campaign sitting above them. And a dot has been added next to the one that is the primary campaign, sorry, primary quest for the campaign. So if I wish to go in and change that, modify the quests that are in it or any data around there, I can just go in there. It's also important to remember if you create a campaign uh, that the quest that is the primary campaign will dictate what status the other quests are. So if you had a mixture of all these being um, private and shared, they would all be shared when you saved it, if that makes sense. It's quite a few mechanics going on, but yes, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I think those are most of the features, to be fair. Uh, there's a lot to kind of wrap your head around that hopefully you shouldn't confuse people too much. Uh, the key thing is to remember, this is always the same as it always has been. If you want to push it to the cloud, press the little cloud. If you haven't got any quests or you want to pull down something from the cloud, you use this here. You can also delete stuff from the cloud if you wish. Um, obviously, when you've done that, if they had a share link before, that's all gone. 
Equally, if you delete a quest, which is the primary campaign, primary quest in a campaign, it will delete all the campaign data. It won't delete the quests associated with it. Um, so that's just a kind of logic thing I had to put in there to make sure you didn't create broken campaigns by accident if you deleted a quest in the middle of them, for example. Um, but you'll get warnings and notices within the, the uh, HQuest Builder to tell you that. I've done this video many times now, and hopefully that all made sense, and I haven't spoken for about 25 minutes. Um, but as always, drop me a line if you've got any questions, or if you've got any feature requests, or um, if you've got stuck with anything, or if you've got any anything at all, really. I always love hearing from the community, and I'm really, really excited to see what happens now these features have been unlocked for the rest of the community. Um, like I say, it's been a bit longer coming than I would have liked it to have been, but I'm very, very pleased to be able to offer this as a feature for HQuest Builder. Um, but yeah, happy quest for building, folks, and I shall speak to you all soon. Take care for now. Bye.